I don't think, maybe yeah. maybe all the sisters don't know if no. the K building is. Well, K building is the building up in Harlem Hospital that was taken over by community people, I for one. And um, the first time it ever was done, we're still fighting to keep control. But like we, you know, like we tell the doctors, we do our thing or don't be no thing. We blow it up. I mean that. I don't care if the CIA listening, you know, blow it up. Because it has to be a change. And people have to stand up, especially black people for their principles. Because, you know, other groups don't think that we have too many principles. That it's nothing really that we want, that we think is worth fighting for. We can always go over in Vietnam and kill somebody, bam, they look like us. But we never, you know, have banned our resources and our dreams to actually get something constructive. We're always fighting somebody else's wars, fighting for somebody else's ideals. We never really want to fight for ourselves. That's why, as the sister was saying, the K-Building meant so much. This was something for our people, something we believed in to the extent that we would have died right there. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, for me, myself, it's the first time I ever had anything that meant that much to me. And those were drug yeah. addicts uh, who, who yeah, wanted... Yeah, well, we opened it mostly because um, we took it. We had, just like you say, we went here, we went there, asking everybody, you know, could we get facilities for adolescents? And uh, every day you always heard, I'll call you, don't call me. So then one rainy evening, we decided to go up there and take two floors that were badly needed in a community of 150,000 addicts. Because as the sisters here say, you get tired of watching your people die. So we took it. Well, we had a principle. This is what I'm saying. The principle is still there, and every day we don't relax. Mm -hmm. We keep right on so we can get it perfect. At least we're able, like she say, to save the children. And this is what we have to do. You have to save the children in order to save the race. I want to say something that some of you may disagree with, and that is uh, I don't think you can just work for black children. I think that... The, the minute you start working on the problems of the black child, you find that you have to be concerned about all children, don't you? I mean, if you're working on drugs... Well, don't ask me that. I will never refuse any human being to come in yes. there, but I'm concerned about mine because you can't go, you know, up in the Bronx when you haven't even cleaned up. I can't clean up... If I can't mm -hmm. clean up my house, in other words, how the hell am I going to clean up yours? i got to clean up mine first, just exactly. like this sister said. Then clean up yours. You know, because, like, drugs with us has been in our community. 25 or 30 years, nobody really ever cared. Sure. You know, yeah. we have kids up there 13 years old, been on drugs two and a half years, and the Board of Education haven't even missed them out of school. You know, like we say, they freed us 300 and some years ago, turned around 50 years later and gave us dope. You know, <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't really go, for, you know, for all of that about going across the river and doing something. I think we should stay on this side, try to do what we have to do for each other. I don't think that we can work just on our own problems unless we are concerned about the total society. And as a matter of fact, unless we go across the river too and we're concerned about a, a lot of things happening in, in the world. This is, this is a very small planet. And uh, we feel the impact of, uh, of these forces. I, I don't think that we can concentrate just on what you call the black nation so long as we exist in an America, which is a sick society. Don't Ms. you Fairfax? think we have to work on that? No, I don't. You know, I, re well, I really... I, I just no, wanted I to understand. define this as a difference of I appreciate everything you're saying, but no. quite often when people do not understand, they cannot relate. And I don't really think you understand what's going on uh, in, in, in black communities. Yeah. I think you're very comfortable. I mean, I... I please... <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. I think you're very comfortable sitting in your office and trying to be very community-oriented from your desk and in your plush, air-conditioned place. Um, <laughs> it's not very pleasant. No, no, but you, you have to get... <laughs> no I would like yeah. to see your office moved to a rat-infested so. yeah. apartment. Right. If, well, see, if I even want them roach infested yeah. Right, yeah, house. we've all yeah. known what it is. No, but I live there right now. Yeah. I mean, I live there roach. right now. Oh, oh, but my, my point is you have to understand how the system operates in order to take it over and to make it more responsive to Ms. you. Fairfax, now, there are ways I of, uh, th and I think there are ways of, uh, of, of turning programs around. I, I think all of you are involved in Fairfax, you know. Take a walk. Really? Pardon? Take a ride. I mean, really, so I mean, if you look there, go out 114th Street and 8th Avenue, then curve all up through there. You see how the system works. 
Indeed. You will see how mm -hmm. the system works. And when we see, you know, professional people of our own race start to work with that system, then we know, you know, where it's coming from. And a lot of us black people have to begin to learn that we are black and that man will always look at us just as that. Regardless of how much he might eat with us and pat us on our back, he still look at us for just what we are. This little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine so bright, let it shine. This little light of mine will burn so bright that not only my people, but all people will see it burn. Burn, baby, burn. The Shrine of the Black Madonna here in Detroit is an interesting church for many reasons. First of all, it has a black Madonna. Secondly, it celebrates a black theology. And third, it celebrates holidays in an interesting way, a black way, as it should be. Case in point, Woman's Day, October 25th. Here at the Shrine, the theme was New Directions for Black Women in the Liberation Struggle. Traditionally in, uh, in black churches, there's a Woman's Day which has no relevance to anything that's, that's important to black people. It's just a fundraising uh, uh, activity by black churches where women go out and try to raise as much money as they can. We are concerned with making the Women's Day a festival which symbolizes, points out, uh, highlights the importance of black women uh, to the church and to the total liberation struggle. What time is it? Time. Then let the black nation rise. Let the black nation rise. Let the black nation rise. What I'm going to say will be in two parts. The first part will be talking about black women in the struggle, and it's called Queens of the Universe, because black women be queens. If they could just see their beauty, you see. We black women have been called many things, foxes, matriarchs, sapphires, sisters, and recently, queens. 
I would say that black women have been a combination of all them words, because if we examine our past history at one time or another, we've had to be like them words be saying. But today, there are some words we can discard. There be some we must discard for our own survival, for our own sanity, for the contributions we must make to our emerging black nation and what, how he, we must move to as the only queens of this universe to sustain, keep our sanity in this insane, messed up, die-conscious, pill-taken, masochistic, mis oriented society got to be dealt with. Cause that's us, you all hear me, us, black women, the only queens of this universe. Even though we be stepping on queenly sometimes, like it ain't easy being a queen in this unrighteous world full of Miss Anns and Mr. Anns, but we steady trying. Women have been uh, traditionally, historically, uh, tremendously important to any oppressed people in the sense of making it possible for an oppressed people to survive, making it possible for them to pass on uh, some of the traditions and culture of a people when uh, the existence of a man was seriously threatened from, gen from day to day and from week to week and month to month. And so really for that reason we uh, call the, the church the Shrine of the Black Madonna to symbolize not only the religious significance of Mary as the mother of Jesus but the significance of all black women and the generations of struggle and sacrifice that black women have made in making it possible for black people to survive and come to this day. It's also important that we realize that in this day the, the uh, role of black women has changed because we're much more clear about what uh, the uh, liberation struggle is all about and black women have the task now of creating uh, young black people, black children and black adults who can participate in, the, in a liberation struggle that seeks for independence and for freedom and for community control and the things which are important to people who are seriously engaged in liberation. speaks of revolution, we don't have to say that revolution, what are we doing now trying to change things? We didn't just wait until now to start trying to change things. That evening, the women put together a festival that spoke to the church members about blackness and history of black revolution. Recognition was awarded the most interesting presentations and a soul food dinner was served. A black celebration for a woman's day and a black church, the shrine of the black Madonna. This is George Martin in Detroit for Black Journal. Ladybird, 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 fly away home. Your house is on fire and wraps on the phone. Can I ask you one question? You don't have to answer it. Uh, recently, a white show asked you to give them 90 minutes. <laughs> why, why did you turn that down? I turned it down because in the first place I'd rather do it on my own show if I had one, if we had one. And I didn't feel like giving my life to, to someone that I don't feel very close to. I want to ask you a question, but what's the sisterhood? What do, what do you want? Well, I wouldn't be so crude as to call it a black mafia, but I would say, no, I would say anybody that has a feeling of clan and not KK, but, but relativeness and familyness is my, what my sisterhood means. Yeah, well, what, um, I'm afraid that because mm -hmm. I didn't have one of my own, I've latched onto the one I'm entitled to. <laughs> you never know, Well, I didn't have sisters or brothers or my mom and papa, you know, and so mm -hmm. I have you all. Where do you think you're going? You know? Well, I'm still a little um, numb at the moment uh, from the past six months, but I, uh, I feel adventuresome. I, uh, I don't think I'm just going to stop and sit down. I don't necessarily mean singing or... I'm not 
uh, I'm not a lecturer, I'm not a writer, I'm not a, uh, I'm just, uh, I guess I'm a performer, but I feel creative. Uh, I feel I need to be around people. I like it now. And I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to stop. There are many, many things that uh, uh, we can do if we take, we look at ourselves seriously as a nation and not get preoccupied with the goings on of someone else and get pre preoccupied with what we're doing. You know, they actually say resources in the black community. We should use those resources and we should move around, you know, in such a way as though we were seriously thinking about having a nation. I agree. And seriously. Seriously, and not just say it because it sounds good or say it because it is hip, because nationalism is not fadism. And I think that a lot of people That's are true. identifying with different things because it is hip to identify with certain things. But it is hipper to understand that we are slaves and we got to be free. Mm -hmm. And it's even hipper to work at our, at work at our, you know, our freedom, national liberation for black people. Well, what about the sisters who don't agree with you? Then yeah. who has to deal with them? Well, it's not about agreeing with me. It's about doing. It's not agreeing no, about it. No, no, they will just say, I don't agree. It is, you know, well, we, don't, we just have that, you know, she can say, I don't agree with you. You know, right. my man won't let me do that. I don't want to do that. And but, what will happen to these, to these people? Uh, I don't, I'm not going to preoccupy myself in terms of what will happen to them because I know that more people are preoccupied with freedom. No one wants to be a slave. But are we talking about a black nation? I'm talking about black people who haven't quite gotten the mind thing together. Mm -hmm. So we have to preoccupy our minds. I with think that uh, we're, uh, because all black people don't say they're nationalists and because all black people don't, you know, wear braids or naturals in traditional clothes don't mean they're not nationalists now. Mm -hmm. Now they're nationalists, mm -hmm. but they just don't use the word. Mm -hmm because no one wants to be a slave. Okay. And there's no black person on this planet who, dis who will disagree with freedom. <laughs> so like, I don't know okay. whether, you know, okay. we can consider that or not. What you're saying is then that uh, it's that many people will be working on things from different perspectives. Be working on the problems of freedom from, uh, from exactly. in, in, in different ways. Exactly. Sure, they'll work mm -hmm. on, people work at the level they can understand. Mm -hmm. Because they don't, don't understand uh, certain levels does not mean that they're not nationalistic. It just means they have, they're not conscious enough to understand uh, certain levels of, 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 of what's going on. But that is your job. If you are conscious enough to understand it, then it is your job to make sure that those who understand one has, will understand two, and um, that is the job of the, you know, the conscious nationalist. And uh, uh, your mama always says that if uh, you're a nationalist and you're talking bad about someone else and you're not doing anything to, you know, to get them where you think they should be, then it's you, because you're that hip, then you should be hip enough to change them. Painters, why do you always paint white virgins? Don't you know there are beautiful black angels in heaven also? Painters, paint beautiful black angels. Blanca 
pintame anelitos negros que también se van al cielo. Todos los negritos buenos pintar si pintas con amor. I used to wonder who I'd be when I was a little girl in Indianapolis sitting on doctor's porches with post-on pre-debs, wondering would my aunt drag me to church Sunday. I was meaningless, and I wondered if life would give me a chance to mean. I found a new life in the withdrawal from all things not like my image. When I was a teenager, I used to sit on, on front porch steps conversing the gym teacher's son with embryonic eyes about the essential essence of the universe recognizing the basic powerlessness of me. But then I went to college where I learned that just because everything I was was unreal, I could be real, and not just real through withdrawal into emotional crosshairs or colored bourgeois intellectual pretensions, but from involvement with things approaching reality, I could possibly have a life. So catatonic emotions and time-wasting sex games were replaced with functioning commitments to logic and necessity and the gray area was slowly darkened into a black thing. For a while, progress was made, along with a certain degree of happiness, because I wrote a book and found a love and organized a theater and even gave some lessons, some lectures on black history and began to believe all good people could get together and win without bloodshed. Then Hamishko was killed and Lumumba was killed and Diem was killed and Kennedy was killed and Malcolm was killed, and Evers was killed, and Swerner, Cheney, and Goodman were killed, and Luizio was killed, and Stokely fled the country, and Leroy was arrested, and Rapp was arrested, and Pollard, Thompson, and Cooper were killed, and King was killed, and Kennedy was killed. And sometimes I wonder why I didn't become a debutante, sitting on doctor's porches, going to church all the time, wondering, is my eye makeup on straight? or withdrawn, discoursing on the stars and the moon, instead of a for real black person who must now feel and inflict pain. Siempre que vinda 